All right. Hello, lovely people, lovely listeners and supporters of We Sam's World. Um, I want to thank real quick to our new subscribers, as usual. Uh, we have Victoria, Jenny. I really appreciate you guys. You guys have been commenting on the YouTube videos as well. You've been enjoying them. We'd love to hear and respond to all your comments. Uh, yeah. Seriously, guys, so much love and appreciation for everybody who subscribed to us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, left reviews for us, and also follow us on the social medias. I uh, really appreciate you guys for doing that, and we've been growing, and we've been having a good time, and just much love to everybody out there. I know you're probably driving right now, or in your home cleaning, or you're just waking up, and you're like, oh my god, I want to listen to Wee Sam's voice, you know? That's the majority of listeners, probably. Probably not. Uh, we just had an incident in the studio before we started. Peyton apparently said there was a ghost upstairs. We got ghosts upstairs. So what happened? I was going to turn on the AC, and like I, I watched, there's like a big like desk right. going across the middle of it. And I went, and I turned on the AC. By the way, there's a creepy moon painted up there now. Okay. So that's scary enough right. as it is. Right, right, right. And then I turn around, and I'm walking back, and there's this little yellow clip, and it just goes... Whoosh, and it lands on the floor. What? And I'm like, yeah, so the moon's angry at me up there. The wait, wait, moon's wait. a ghost now. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. A clip? Like a paper clip? It wasn't like a paper clip. It was this yellow, like, stand-looking thing. I don't know what it was, but there's a yellow thing up there, and it and shot off the table and landed on the floor. And it was, it was great. I loved it. What did you do when that happened? I just picked it up and put it back. What? Dude, I This love... just happened. Yeah, just now. Dude, I'm going ghost hunting. I don't care. I want to see stuff. <laughs> you can do it I here, I want to bring apparently. a Ouija board. I want to bring like a like a like a summoner, uh, a, a a Wiccan person, a witch. I want I want to see something. I want to see something. Okay? I'm upset and kind of jealous that my uh, that uh, Peyton got to see something and I didn't. Okay? <laughs> okay, ghost of Adobe, you will show yourself to Peyton and not to me. That's fine. Because they know I believe. That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not bitter. You're bitter. I don't know. I did feel something like a presence here a while ago. So that was interesting. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's just get right to it. Our guest today uh, is a very talented actress. And she's also working uh, with a global think tank nowadays. And I was actually... Work, I actually worked with her on an episode of uh, I Didn't Do It, which uh, if you – it might sound familiar because it was on Disney Channel a while ago. And uh, she's super talented. I'm super excited to have her on. And uh, please welcome Sarah Gilman. Ah! Hello. 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 Good, good, good. Have a seat. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, shit. You did oh, bring it. Yeah, I did. It's just the one I used. Oh my okay. gosh. Let's see. So we got ghosts, apparently. Okay, I'm actually so happy you brought that up because I have a story. Okay, let's do it. Is it a thing? Do I need to wear these? Do uh, I need you don't have to, but sometimes people like to hear their voice. Does it help? Does it help? Is this is this the sweet spot? Yeah, that's the sweet spot. Okay. Michael, is she good? Yeah. Am I good? Yeah, Am I good? good? Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna DJ gonna, it up. Okay. Um, okay, so one time I was at a house party. Not that I don't go partying a lot, but yeah. you know, hypothetically I was at a house party. And these girls kind of like Ran around and found like a, an empty beer box and then opened it up and j took nail polish out of their purse. I shit you not. And then like drew a Ouija board pattern on like the empty cardboard side of this beer box. Right. And like was just like in the kitchen trying to like summon something. And I was like, guys, you just made a Ouija board out of like a white claw box or something. I was like, what are you trying to summon? Like, like Chad of like frats past. I just like, <laughs> it's just, I, I feel like that's not how it works. And I feel like you can't, who makes Ouija boards? I don't know. Some, somebody who's either like that or super serious. Like they'll go to a specific type of tree, cut up the wood, the carve it, and, but it has to be like a full moon outside or something. That's okay. what I assume. If a wolf make... is best. Actually, I think there's... Hasbro makes it now. Has... They do. Are you serious? Like toys the... are us. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. No. Do people not watch movies anymore? Do you believe in ghosts? Um. <laughs> it is a Hasbro thing. <laughs> it's a Hasbro thing. Um, do I believe in ghosts? I think my approach to ghosts is to 
No, okay, so given that I can't disprove anything, like you just can't, you can't disprove mm. anything, um, I don't actively believe in ghosts, but I also mm. am not comfortable saying they don't exist. Right. Does that make sense? Y you're in the middle. Yeah. I'm somewhere in that same category because a little fun fact about me, I've mentioned this on the show before, but I love watching ghost hunting shows. I actually watch them a lot before bedtime. They help me sleep. Interesting. Yeah, I feel cozy in my bed. We love a little um, oxymoron paradox, man. Right, <laughs> right. They're somewhere cold, and it's and and in the middle of the night, and mm -hmm. they 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 think they hear this something, and I'm cozy in my bed, and I immediately fall asleep. It's like five minutes. I'm out. All right. Yeah. Uh, so I know as well as you know how easy it is to fake something editing wise. Yes. So that's why I'm always like, come on, every single episode, you find <laughs> something. Every single episode. I don't know. But also, like, if you're going to go down that road, like, you know, we've been around for 10,000 years. Like, that's when human civilization started, maybe, is what I've heard. Like, humans, am I wrong? Humans, like, 10,000 years, about right? No. I think so. A couple million, maybe. Are you talking about known history? And, like, like civilizations, not just, like... Uh, I'm like, gonna... like <laughs> no, <laughs> we're going to blow science this <laughs> so bad right now. Uh, but, oh, no, God. I know what you're talking about. Like... There's probably, like, uh, we go back way, like, Maya, Aztec. I personally believe some form of Atlantis existed. I would love to believe that. Like, I would love for that to be true. Yeah. But, I, I mean, humans have been around for, I want to say, millions of years. But, like, I mean, like, I think, like, human civilization, I think, mm. like, formally started, like, 10,000 years ago. Okay. Like, that's, like, a lot of ghosts. Fair. Yeah, that's, like, a lot of ghosts, right? So, like, why would you not, like, run into one, like... They might just be in, like, a cesspool around us right now, right? Like, mm. where, if they're not here, where are they? So then, do you think, like, animal ghosts exist? With that, with that? Well, with... again, I'm just, I'm just, you know, shooting ideas out there. I'm spitballing, too. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't really believe in them at all, but I can't yeah. say they don't exist. Right, Do you right. know what I mean? I, I do. I, I absolutely do. I think, for me, I believe in reincarnation only through humans, with, with my faith. And I just... There's so much unknown, you know what I mean, with this whole death process. I've been thinking a lot yeah. about death recently. I feel no. you. Um, and it's, it, I was talking with a friend the other day, and it's so surprising that in, in Western culture, especially Western culture, I'm not mm -hmm. just talking about the U.S., Western culture, something that's going to happen to everybody at a certain point, and they're going to experience it secondhand at a certain point, it's rarely talked about. I mean, okay, so I understand what you mean, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm interested because you're saying Western culture, so I want to. I'm assuming you know like the Eastern culture take on this. Yeah, some, uh, some uh, like a, a good handful of Eastern culture take on death. Okay, yeah, but like, I mean, the, uh, in that like nobody's talking about it day to day, or mm -hmm. do you mean like full off philosophy or like religions not addressing it? Because I mean, oh. like in like Western religion, it's a huge thing of like. Do good in this life so you can have a good afterlife. Okay. Um, and then, I don't know, in terms of, I've been reading a lot of, like, um, like Greek philosophy and yeah. Roman philosophy recently. And I kind of like their approach in that, like, you don't know what death is, so why fear the unknown? Mm -hmm. Like, we have no idea. So, like, why spend your life being afraid of it? Um, and... If anything, like, I'm reading Seneca right now, mm. like, the whole, like, on the shortness of life. Yeah. And his whole, I mean, I'm about it. It's, like, why spend your whole life fearing the future and, like, everybody wastes their present? And so by the end of their life, everyone's like, I didn't have enough time. And his argument is, like, you had enough time, but you existed, you didn't live. Mm -hmm. So. I, I should be more specific. <laughs> Whenever I you, what what I just took us on a road you didn't want to go down. I'm so no, sorry. I love it. No, uh, I minored in philosophy. So, oh, I love yeah, this. Yeah. Teach me. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> school me. No, no, Tell no, me. No, no, no. Um, I should be more specific. Yes, in in the religious institutions, mm -hmm. right? You've got the whole concept of death, which is very prevalent. Mm -hmm. My interaction and the way I've seen other people react, especially like in Los Angeles or Oklahoma, your day to day life. You know, let's say you do go to church once Can a I week. Just sidebar super quick. Yeah. Are you from Oklahoma? Is there a reason why it's just Los Angeles and Oklahoma? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was raised most of my life in Oklahoma. Okay, gotcha. I was <laughs> born in Syria, raised most of my life in Oklahoma, okay. and lived here for the last 10 years plus. Just making sure. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And okay. you're, you were like, huh? I was like, interesting two uh, samples we got there. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh my god. Can I okay, side side note. Okay. Uh we worked together 6 years ago on I didn't do it and mm. it's so cool to see you now cuz I do remember you guys uh from that project and it was a fun project to work on. So, it's cool to see 
what you were like then and then what you were like now. Yep. <laughs> I think I was a little asshole. <laughs> a little bit. Not asshole. A little bit. But you were in work mode. I, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's, it's that's, stressful. I'm a Capricorn. Well, is that a kind of nut? What is, no. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm I opened this bag of worms. Yeah. Oh, my God. We've gone on, like, side, <laughs> side, side okay, stories. Back to, back to religious institutions. We don't need to go into astrology. Absolutely not. Oh, my gosh. This is, this is, <laughs> this is ridiculous. I love it. I was going to say, from what I see people, especially in Los Angeles, their day-to-day -day life is kind of run by the phone, social, uh, what's going on in the world, that life worth living kind of mm -hmm. thing is not, I see the majority of people, especially when I first started out here, living that kind of, uh, I'm going to numb my life. I'm going to distract myself. And I saw people waste literally tens of years of their life gone away with the same negative habits. So that's what I mean by that. Like, I feel like it's like, if you really focus, like, if you really focused on the fact that, okay, I understand that I'm going to die someday. That doesn't mean I'm going to be super afraid of it it might yeah. give me a little anxiety but i'm going to make my life the best type best life worth living then i think it makes that moment a little less anxious when you come to it if you're lucky to be aware when it's when it's happening yeah no i would i would agree i would also i get what you mean i think in terms of um like being aware of death in order to appreciate life more yes it's like 100%. when you realize how finite our time on earth is yeah it's like it's it is i mean i hate to say it, but like i definitely got sucked into that that kind of culture of you know, looking at my screen time and it was literally like seven hours on my phone a day or like, six, you know, like five hours. I mean, and it's not yeah. like I'm just sitting there doing it, but it's like all multitask or like emails or, you know, scrolling through social media. And it's like, I think I finally like sat down and I was just like, this is like useless time. It's not like I'm reading a book and I'm actually like getting some information. It's like I'll scroll through pictures. And then if you asked me what I saw on Instagram two days ago, I couldn't tell you. Like you could like pay me a hundred dollars, I'd not be able to get, like tell you one post unless it like really stuck out stuck out to me. Yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like I'm on a similar journey as you in terms of like recently just trying to be a lot more mindful, a lot more like grateful, coming from like places of mindfulness and gratefulness in my life, mm -hmm. and it's been kind of a nice little I don't want to say cocoon, but like buffer to all the anxiety in the world right now. Not to like get us into like. I'm not trying to make this like a political talk, but even just like with like AI and technology and how fast everything's moving forward and globalization and how different our culture is nowadays from even like 10 years ago. It's like just remembering like, oh, I'm here and I'm so happy to be here and I'm mm. going to make the most of it while I'm here. It like it helps a little bit. I don't know. That's wonderful. You're in that. You're starting to get into that mindset. How old are you? If you don't mind me asking. I'm 23. 23. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that, this is where it starts happening. Yeah. I'm timeless. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm 32. <laughs> and uh, yeah, early 20s are very interesting. Going into like mid-20s and yeah. then late 20s, major shifts start happening. It's it's so weird. Like my sister's turning 28 and it is so it is really odd how it's just like the people like get to 25 and they're like, oh, no, I'm halfway. And then 26, like I'm closer to 30. And then everybody, I don't know, I've heard of... Like, people are, like, I'm scared to get to 30, and then when you're at 30, people are like, I would never go back. Like, I'm so much more stable in my 30s than in my 20s. I don't know if you have, you know, oh, I would assume. I don't know how I survived. Right? My <laughs> early 20s or late teens. Yeah. I should have died. Mm, like, you multiple talk times. About that? Oh, I was crazy. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was crazy. Like, 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 daredevil kind of thing? Yeah, just not like, like drugs or anything like okay. that. Uh, I think I've gotten drunk, like, less than 10 times total in my mm. life, but... I mean, I've done some questionable things where it's like, hey, you know, my guardian angel's like working overtime. He's like, this guy's crazy. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're working like overtime and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it's it's amazing to to think about what you th what you thought was important to in your late teens compared to now. You're like, oh, my gosh, I started well, I stopped being afraid of the dark whenever I moved out here alone mm -hmm. and started paying taxes. I was like, oh, I'm not scared of the dark anymore. Like. <laughs> I pay taxes. Like, it's just ridiculous. Like, I have to worry about taxes. Like, it was such a big stress to me that I was like, I can't be, I'm afraid to walk in my own home when it's dark. No, 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 no. I'm not dealing with that. I mean, that makes sense. That's kind of like a, that's like a, that's a cool way to approach, like, fear. Like, I can, like, deal with the IRS. Like, poor yeah. spiders. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. 
No, spiders are still really scary. I don't like them. Yeah, I saw this funny quote that said something like, the spiders, every time you kill a spider, you're just making their their species stronger because you're killing off the ones that got caught. We say, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Isn't that no. frightening? No, it, they're all frightening. Like yeah. they're they're like they're, that's my one actual fear. Like I can. Oh, oh shit! I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank oh, 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 oh. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, like the scene in Harry Potter, like the the you know Chamber of Secrets scene, oh. unnecessary, unfreaking necessary. Why didn't they leave? Like, there's no reason. Like my mom tried to do the whole like you know overcome your fears through just like like strength of will type thing. Yeah. When I was younger. So she wouldn't kill spiders if they or like take them outside if they oh. were in the house. They, she would just be like, "No, you have to walk around it. You have to learn to like coexist." Mm. And it didn't work. And I just like stopped walking around my house if there were spiders. I would like sit on the floor and cry. I'm not kidding. This Whoa. is a big thing for me. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm like a little better now, but it's like it's weird. I can handle like cockroaches. I can't spiders. Can't do spiders. Yeah, there's something interesting about the they actual just have, like, spider. The legs and the the eyes. Yeah. I mean, most things have those two things, but like they have too many of them. <laughs> They're too many. You know, they have legs. <laughs> oh, no, gross. <laughs> um, you know, that's I I'm so glad like spiders aren't the size of bears in the forest. I think human civilization would be a lot different. Isn't that um like aren't there multiple movies about that? Eight-Legged Freaks, that was an early, or late 90s film, I think, early 2000s. Yep. Yeah. Or just, like, tarant Ara tarantula? Arachnophobia. Arach yeah. yeah, all the things, it's like, well, I, I kind of wonder, like, when did when did this fear, like, come about? You know what I mean? Mm. Like, w like, what fears make sense? Like, fear is so weird. Like, agoraphobia, mm. like, you know, I'm, I don't want to leave my house. Yeah. That's such an interesting like, topic. Now, now we're on the topic of fear. That's actually a really. I think it deals with circumstances and how it how it wires your brain at an early age. Yeah, like traumatic traumatic events, like when your brain's developing. That makes sense. Absolutely. But like, I can't. If you ask me to pinpoint something about like why I'm afraid of spiders, I, I could not tell you. So some of it is also uh, from podcasts I've listened to. It's in our genes from years of evolution. So, for instance, like we're naturally scared of like a hissing snake that's because fair. of years of evolution and yeah that, i mean that's so fair like babies they'll they'll be like afraid of a snake that's just it's like isn't it oh gosh i i i just read a book on brain so now i'm a brain expert no but like um <laughs> can we start over can we just start <laughs> can we just redo this thing this is awesome i'm having a great time um well um i don't it's just like the the how much we don't know about the brain mm -hmm. and why we are the way we are, like the connection between mind and brain and consciousness mm -hmm. is fascinating to me, especially now that we're creating like robots. But it's like the fact that like it makes sense to me that we're innately afraid of heights. Mm. You know, like it makes sense from an evolutionary standpoint. Like, of course, like falling off a cliff is bad. Yeah. So like therefore, if I, you know, that makes sense. But like what what structuring in the brain is like. Yes, she's afraid of heights. And why do some people have it and some people don't? Mm. The, phys it, the, the, the physical side are you talking about? I mean, like, the same way that, like, you're talking about, like, babies are, like, naturally afraid of, like, hissing snakes, right? Yeah. It's, it, uh, I'm not smart enough to understand it. I, the, the amount that I do know is mm -hmm. literally neurons in your brain creating new pathways. Yeah. That's it. And they're actually, like, and then I start thinking about, like, how does that cell know to do that? You know, like yeah. that's just that that boggles my mind the same way it, it confuses you. I mean, yeah, it's very confusing. And sometimes I watch little ame I saw an amoeba, amoeba, those little yeah, um, the little um, singular cell organisms. Yep. Mm -hmm. How does it know that it, it should reach over there and eat that other cell? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I know it's so it's there's so much I don't know in life. Yeah. And the human body itself is I don't know. I feel a, like it's a miracle. Right? And I feel like I should know more about my body, which mm. sounds that's a that maybe sounded like a weird thing to say, but I mean like I feel like the most important you you went to college. You said you mm. majored minor in philosophy. Maybe. Majored in theater performance. Okay. So do you ever feel like the most important classes you took were in like high school and middle school? Uh, no. I felt like most of my 
high school and middle school mm -hmm. were a waste of time. Okay, but I mean, like, if you look back in retrospect, and I, this would be a, an interesting, interesting wow discussion. Like, um, I mean, in terms of like life knowledge that you as a human adult should know, the ones that you're required to take in high school, like um, government or you know, like American or world history, biology, like all of that. Like that was like required in high school. When I went mm -hmm. to USC, it wasn't like you had to do general education, mm -hmm. but you could get away with avoiding all of those. Like mm -hmm. you could take some really obscure history class. Okay. But like I find that like so few people, cause like I don't remember half the stuff I learned in high school to be honest. Like mm. it was like, it, like I didn't appreciate it then. And like a lot of the books we read, like literature, didn't appreciate it. I need to go back and read like Crime and Punishment for sure. But um, yeah. but it's just like it's so interesting because like government wasn't required at USC like you you could get away with not taking it and it was and like it was kind of required at my high school but you could take economics instead yeah. and it's just like that's really important as we're seeing now 100%. that like government and like half the people in our country or I don't know half the people I talk to have no idea how it works so. If I'm not mistaken, I watched this video of this billionaire. He was talking about when he was uh, growing up, he was like, uh, Dad, why don't they teach economics in school? Mm -hmm. Just basic economics, I think, is so critical, especially when you're in high school. It's like, hey, these are one of the classes. You're going to know learn how to do the basics, write a check, start a bank account, savings, investment, and if, if you're curious, taxes, what it's like with wh – why do we pay taxes, What that, all that stuff, economics. And he's like, because the government doesn't want the schools to teach that at a younger age. And I'm kind of believing that now because let's – there's so many unnecessary courses that we learn in high school – that it's like, okay, like, why are we learning uh, Algebra 2? Like, why is that necessary? I'm sorry, I've never used Algebra 2. I get it, you need to learn basic math. I agree with that. And if you want to study something in a field, then you have to go through that whole curriculum. Um, history, I think, is important. But stuff like economics, government, why was that just so casually, like, oh, there's a little class here on the side that you could take. I don't know, something's fishy. <laughs> There's something afoot. <laughs> There's something afoot. Well, you're – when we – I asked you earlier before we got on, mm -hmm. you're not acting anymore. Is that correct or are you kind of oh, doing no, a little – Oh, no, no, no. I'm definitely, st definitely still acting. Okay. Yeah. But you've transitioned to something new. Mm. Yeah, so – Is this in the political sector? I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, no, no. You're good. Um, Kind of. Okay. It's – when I – so I went to – I was acting – I started acting when I was – I don't know, oh, maybe like sixth grade, so around mm. like eleven ish. Okay. Um, and it was like solely because like I was already in LA. Like it, it just happened. It wasn't. I didn't go to my parents, and I wasn't like I want to be an actress. It just kind of like we stumbled upon it. Mm. It started in summer camp. Like it was like one of those like outlier stories of like people who get into Hollywood. Um, and it's been, like, great. And I've, for, like, my whole life always balanced, like, school and acting. So, like, when I was on I Didn't Do It, part of the reason I was so, um, uh, well, I don't want to, ball buster, I guess, on set during work, oh, maybe. No, no, you weren't. Um, uh, not my experience. I'll say that. Okay. I'll be honest with you. If you were, I could tell, though, no, for real, when I said work mode, you were focused. And it's a lot of work for people mm -hmm. who don't understand, especially doing a multicam. It's not like... It's not the same as doing a, like a single cam, a single cam show. It yeah. really isn't, and it's a lot of work for somebody who's in their late teens. I, I truly believe so, and nothing prepares you for that amount of work. So yeah. I promise you, you didn't come off oh. like an asshole or anything. Okay, like that. good. Otherwise, you would <laughs> not be on this show. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me on that. Bard. Bard. Um, Karen's like, how about Sarah? I'm like, no. <laughs> Stop saying Sarah. No. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, so I was acting and doing school for like my entire life. Mm -hmm. And so when I got into I Didn't Do It, it was actually like my senior year of high school. I was going to um, a high school in um, like La Cunada, like a college preparatory school. And I, d I wanted to graduate from there. I didn't want to like switch to homeschooling and stuff. So I, were you on season one or two? One, one. right? 2014. Yeah. yeah. So at that time, that was my last year of high school. So I was like... Wow. Yeah. So when I was on set, I was also 
taking myself all my classes and then going in at like 6 a.m. to take tests and then getting ready for the SAT and applying for colleges. So like I've always done those two things. Jeez. And then after that I went to USC and that's what we were doing season two. And then uh, the show ended and then I finished at USC and did like film and TV production there. Um, and then like did some projects, like kept guest starring on like Last Man Standing is kind of like mm -hmm. what I was doing and then did some other projects. But like when I graduated in May, it was like the first time where I was like, cool, just acting. I can finally like just focus on acting. And it's been great, except that like I just have, I'm so used to always having to like do something else that it's been too much free time just acting. Mm. I don't know if you feel the same way. And I'm sure like this podcast also takes a bunch of time and I'm curious to hear what you're doing other than acting. Mm. Maybe I'm crazy. But I just like was I was just like you can't control when auditions come to you. You can like make your own projects to a degree, and then classes are great. But other than that, I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do with my day? All right. And I started getting so anxious that like if anything actually came up during the day, I get anxious that I forgot how to like go to appointments. I was like, I don't know how to be somewhere at two p.m. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. And um, so yeah, it's been kind of about like figuring out what else I'm interested in. In addition, not instead mm -hmm. of, in addition to. Yeah. All right. Let me, <laughs> all right, let me tell you something. Oh my God. Sarah. Take me down. All right, let me tell you <laughs> my experience. All right, I'm 32, okay? okay no. Um, you nailed it on the head. You don't realize until you start doing acting full time how much free time you actually have as an actor. And if you're in a financially stable place, that's great. Then you don't have to go serve tables or do a side hustle. But like you said, something happens where you're like, I don't know what to do with my free time. I don't know what I like to do other than acting. Yeah. Um, I'm a very antsy person, so yep. I always have to keep moving. So mm -hmm. it started off small, like working out, hitting pads, uh, reading books, not scripts, books, and I read a lot of like philosophy, uh, self-help quote books. Um, rarely I read fiction because I'm always reading fiction on scripts. Mm -hmm. And so that gets kind of annoying for me unless it's a really good book. And there's actually a couple books I think you would really enjoy. Okay, I would Chuck love to have a little book. Oh my gosh, he's great. Invisible Monsters is my favorite Oh, book. you know Chuck Palantar? Oh, yeah. I haven't, yes. I haven't read Fight, uh, read, read, read? Yes, I haven't read Fight Club, mm -hmm. but... Um, Damned and doomed, you would love. Okay, I haven't read. I've read choked, choke, and then visible monsters. I want to. I wish. I wish they would remake it. I want to play the guy in choke. It's such an interesting. I can character. see that. That would such be really oh, good. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, like. Oh, okay, All right. Okay, let's, okay, get, let's, uh, let's keep get going. Warner Brothers this. on the phone. All right. Okay, <laughs> guys. We have Hold an idea up. for you. <laughs> We're a bunch of actors, and we want to make a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a pitch. It's the first oh, time this has ever happened. It's new. It's fresh. <laughs> We're, I'm the worst person to pitch an idea to, by the way. I'm like, uh, it's a story about a, a guy, he likes a girl, and yeah. You guys want to do it? Mm, well, see, I've never seen any, I don't watch movies. I'm like mm -hmm. the world's worst film student. So mm -hmm. when they're like, okay, well, give us an idea of like what two projects is this like, I'm like, Harry Met Sally and yeah. Ghostbusters. I've never seen either of those movies, but... That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm, I'm really. I haven't the seen worst. these movies, but it's like this and this. Yeah. No clue what they are, but it's like that. <laughs> exactly. Pay me money. Exactly. With yeah. the finger guns. Finger. You gotta always do finger guns. Finger Make guns. people feel unsafe. Whoa! There's a gun. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> if you ever get robbed at gunpoint, just put <laughs> do a yeah. finger gun what at you, them. What so are you it doing? Confuses them. What are you doing? Wait, what? Uh? what? 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 Dude, what are you doing? What? What is that? Crazy person! <laughs> Come on. Let's go shoot out. Then they don't mess with you. Oh my god! I like that you stuck with that bit right away. Oh. Improv skills, ten oh. out of ten. I was going for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to the free time thing. Yes. What I was talking about. This is why I have like so many hobbies. Mm -hmm. And I read something a long time ago that said, in order to be a good actor, you need to experience life. And so I was like, oh, that's so true. How can I not be? A, how can I be a good actor if I'm not doing other things other than acting? Like experience life. So I started learning about archery. And I got sucked into that. I'm currently playing piano. I traveled, which I think is so important. I would talk to people on my travels. I would just like observe people. Um, and then like stuff that's out of your control, like the negative things that happens in your life, I think really affects how good of an actor you become. Because 
in life, there's a lot of good things and there's a lot of horrible things that happen. And I think it's important for actors, whenever those bad things happen, to really feel what's going on, embrace it, understand it, and to make sure that you're not, that you don't go crazy from it. I think yoga and meditation are key things every actor should do. Those things have helped stabilize me and, and I was able to stabilize my emotions during very traumatic experiences as well. Breathing exercises, uh, having my body be healthy is very important for an actor. So yeah, I don't think you're crazy. Um, I think you just need to go travel more, experience more life, have fun, go out with your friends more, like experience life. And then I, yeah. Does that make sense? No, it totally does. And I think like, like I totally agree with a bunch of it. Um, especially like meditation and yoga. Mm. I don't know. Yoga has been so great in terms of like connecting with my body. Do yeah. you know what I mean? As like weird as that sounds, I feel like, especially in LA, like so much of being active is tied to like be active. So you look great. Mm -hmm. And a lot, it's like, I feel like there's a lot of emphasis on physical appearance and not a lot of emphasis on like, but like, like, how do you feel right now? Like, you know, what does it feel like when your arm is completely tensed up? Like, can you even notice when you're tense? Like, yes, that was a huge thing for yoga with me. I was like, I'm doing this right. And they were like, Sarah, breathe. Like you're very like stiff. And I was like, Oh, I'm tensing every muscle in my yeah. body right now. And I had no idea. Um, people don't realize sometimes they do this yeah. all day long and it's like, oh, just lower your shoulders, bro. Yeah. yeah. It's like, cause like you hold, people hold tension in different places, you know? And like for me, it's like shoulder, back, mm. um, and shoulder is not, not just one. <laughs> um, but I I, just, I, you just do one in the little humpback action. Oh, I look like a weirdo. I was <laughs> practicing piano with my really? pansy. She's like, uh, your left shoulder keeps going up. Is that just the weird thing you do? And I'm like, <laughs> oh Yeah. Yeah, I guess it does go up. I gotta be conscious now to like not play piano like a humpback. That's so interesting. Humpback? Hunch, humpback. Hunchback. No, humpback. No, it's hunchback. No, that's hunchback. a whale. Humpback. It's hunchback. It's hunchback. Hunch hunchback. Cool. I said humpback twice now. I said humpback too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sick. Welcome Actors. to Lisa's world. <laughs> We're so smart. <laughs> Only the smarties here. Um, it is humpback. It's humpback. It's humpback. Humpback whale. Okay, no, but we were talking about, we're talking about hunchback, like the hunchback, the hunchback of, of Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah hunchback. That's, You're yeah. wrong. <laughs> that is hunchback. <laughs> we can all be right, actually. That's it's true. Just, this is fine. That's true. Um, You're so peace. I like the the peace energy you gave. I'm there. trying. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm like listening to. So okay, I need your advice on meditation because mm. I fully recognize how important it is and like the benefits of learning to meditate can actually like help you. I mean, this is, sounds so dumb, but like it helped me think better because once you can like learn to like quiet your mind and focus your mind, you can follow like different thought tracks better. Is that does that make sense? That's what yes. I've heard about it. Yeah. That said, um, wow, accountability and the procrastination. Like I have no account, like self accountability, uh -oh. and I have very, <laughs> I'm very good at procrastination. Okay. How do you hold yourself to meditation? And also, not to be creepy, but I like listened to an earlier episode and you run every morning. How do you do that? <laughs> so, fun fact about that. I would do wake mm -hmm. up early every morning. Okay. But people used to think I run every morning on the mountain. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been doing it lately just because of some health stuff. But I would run a lot. But it wasn't every morning. But all my Instagram feed would be like sunrises. Mm. And so people assumed that like, oh my God, he's running on the mountain every single morning. Uh, I don't do it every morning. But when I was consistent with it, it was... Why the, the 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 benefits I saw from it were so great that even though it was miserable waking up most days, and that was actually the hardest part: waking up at five a.m., four thirty, and getting dressed. That was actually the hardest part. Not even going up the mountain because when you're there, I don't know how you are, but once I'm in the shit, I'm like, okay, oh yeah, let's do this. Yes, like okay, let's make this let's make this worth it. And the feeling I got going up there, meditating and, and doing my prayers, there's something wonderful about that physical release that you get from the struggle and also the mental connection that you have. And then seeing the sunrise is one of the most glorious things a human being can do, especially after an extremely difficult task. Because then you're not worrying about all like the unimportant things in your life. You've, you're just focused on breathing because you're... I'm out of breath and I'm trying not to die. And 
I'm just breathing and I'm, I'm just engaged with this beautiful, miraculous ball of fire just coming up. And then I realize, oh my gosh, we're on this spinning ball and we are so small that Everything looks fat, but uh, flat, but in fact, it's on a sphere. And then I start thinking about the universe. And then I realize, even though we're small, we're not insignificant. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, because of like what what we can do with each other, like love you, you can have with another human being. I'm not talking about like a romantic love, but like true, genuine love and caring and helping each other. And then all this stuff happens. And so that feeling I get is worth every drop of sweat. So... And it's helped me with my anxiety, and anxiety sucks. Yep. So I feel you there. Yeah, and it's also helped tremendously with acting. And my motivation behind acting is to take care of my mom and dad in the future and future family in a positive, financially financed way, and to make great artwork that engage that that enlightens and entertains people so that they better themselves. That's my ultimate goal with my craft. So those are my motivations, and I think. It's got to come from you. You can have outside help, but at a certain point, you got to go, why am I doing this? I'm just going to stick to it. And maybe the, the thought of death might help you as well, knowing that, you know what, I don't want to look back 10 years from now. God forbid I have cancer. I'm on my deathbed. And I go, man, I really wish I would have really worked hard in my early 20s. That's also a big motivator. Regret. Yeah. Did I get too deep? <laughs> <laughs> no, I no, feel no. like this room just got really no, no, quiet. No, no, no. It's, 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 it causes, like, thinking. Um, it's not, not well, first of all, I don't know. Maybe I'm weird, but I don't, I, I prefer deep talks over small talk. Like, we could sit here for, like, Same. an hour and a half and talk about, like, you know, the Oscars if you want. It's fine. Uh, please, no. <laughs> Anything but that. Um, no, I, I like these conversations. Yeah, too. I, I really, you know, I enjoy it because I've, I love I love running. Running to me is like I put on my like podcast mm. and I just run and like at a pace I want and for like an hour and it's like calms my mind like no nothing else. It's like I totally feel you on the anxiety front. Um, I am just like an evening runner <laughs> and I don't want to be. I want to run in the morning and um, and that's partly because like it feels so great once I've finished and like it really does. Like, it's all the morning people talking about, like, I exercise in the morning and my whole day has changed. I'm, like, more positive. And it's true, and I hate them. Um, no, positivity. And I no, no, <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. But, um, yeah, I've, 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 yeah, the goal. Do you, do yeah. you want an accountability? Yeah, let's do it. And I'm, I've done this with some people before, and I, I'm very true to my word mm -hmm. when I say this. And I have cut off one person in my life because of it. Okay. And the other people... Thankfully, they stuck to it, and we're still. I'm still friends with those people. Okay. So high stakes. Uh, very high stakes. Uh, I had similar friends come up to me with this kind of accountability problem, and they really wanted to change their life and that sort of thing. So one of my friends, her name is Rachel. She mm -hmm. was on the show, and she was talking about this. She was going through some stuff, and she's like, "I I just want to go. I I want to I want to feel better. I want to go up the mountain for five days in a row." That's all I want. I want I want to do that for five days or ten days, I forget. And I want to go every single day and see what that does to me, being with nature and everything like that. I'm like, cool. Do you want uh, – she's like, I want you to hold me accountable. I was like, great. If you miss one day, we are no longer friends. I won't – I don't I, – because there's no reason for me to, to keep you in my circle. There's no reason for me to, like, talk to you if you're not going to be that accountable because I'm on a – I'm on a specific – path and train and if yeah. you if you want to join along great if you're not going to do that I'm sorry I don't have time for that and I know that sounds so extreme but she did it and she noticed great life changes from that from going no I'm going to stay true to my word I'm going to do it despite how I feel on a certain day or if I'm sick she went up there one day when she was sick too which I'm like fuck yeah good for you yeah so think about it if you okay. want an ac accountability thing and we could talk about it I, I would love to i would love to discuss uh, an accountability contract situation thing okay yeah now for people who are wondering how we got connected right here yes unfortunately we both know caron <laughs> my boy <laughs> k brar caron brar caron brar caron brar mm -hmm. <laughs> change it <laughs> and your last name caron brar no, i'm kidding caron uh i love caron Really deeply. Yes. I give him a hard time all the time. Yep. But uh, he's such a good guy and... Retweet. 
What? I was just retweeting your statement. I was agreeing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're going to have to cut that part out. <laughs> yeah. Let's go back. Re- rewind. <laughs> Is it the rewind song? Everyone calm down. <laughs> These are things that people do. Oh, this is so funny to me. Oh, my gosh. I'm so happy right now. I'm really glad we got to do this. I'm so happy. I'm so glad you're a cool person, Sidebar. Too. Yeah. Thank you. I am. Um, I'm just kidding. Humble. <laughs> um, but, um, retweet? No, no retweet? not the time. Yeah, quote tweet. Uh, thanks. <laughs> we Sam? Exclamation point. Um, anyway. Cool. Uh, um, okay, cool. So, uh, no, like, I'll have you know, sidebar, that um, I don't have a bucket list, but I have a list for a life well lived okay. um, that I uh, consistently update depending on what I think will bring me joy and happiness in this life. Oh, fuck yeah. That's and awesome. one of them on the career uh, section is do a podcast. And this counts more than anything. That's so, awesome. So, thank you. I just get to cross something off today. What do you think so far, honestly? is it, It's a kind of a weird space. Because this is not, this is less interview and it's just us talking. Well, see, that I prefer that. Because, like, not to be like, meh, 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 but I, I, we, when we were on I Didn't Do It, we had to do, like, you know, Radio Disney stuff sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, it was very fun. It was, like, a, a really cool experience. But there's, like, so much pressure to, like, be cool and, well, I don't know. I felt pressure. I don't necessarily mean that any, they forced that on it or anybody else felt it, but right. I personally felt pressure to, like, you know, seem, come off as fun and, like, oh, yeah, yeah. and, like, fun and cool and all that. And, like, I prefer this where it's just, we could be at a coffee shop without mics and a headphone and this would be the same conversation. Do you know uh, what I mean? I, th- this is why I do the podcast. Yeah. I love doing that just talking with people like just cool humans. people yeah, talk, yeah nobody we I, uh, yeah it's 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 almost like a, a luxury nowadays to like really talk and listen to a human on my end it, i'm sure it's uh, i'm sure it's fun on the the the, the quote quote uh guest end mm-hmm. there is a certain amount of i hate using this word host skill yeah. Like in terms of the, the converse, being a conversationalist is actually a skill. I oh, learned 100%. That. And I took some tips from Joe Rogan, who I, I, I love his podcast. I don't listen to every single episode, but I just love how long he's been doing it and how engaging he is. And I heard him on the podcast talking about how conversation is actually a skill. And I was like, oh, okay, I, yes, I dig that. And like developing that over... We're almost at 100 episodes for this one, my Ooh, previous congrats. one. Thanks. And then my previous podcast, we did like 105. So it's been such a great learning curve. And I actually went back and listened to one of my old ones, and I was like, oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I really enjoy these. And I think, I don't know about you, but whenever I was doing a lot of red carpet stuff for my previous show, I can't. I, it's, it's hard doing those red carpet interviews. They're the same questions over and over over and over again and you have to put on this like not facade but it is it does feel a little fake like just smiling and stuff and can i tell you a secret yeah i totally lied on my first red carpet from disney oh yeah because because of this because of this feeling yes um first of all all the another sidebar wow i'm all about them today is that you are you're a great conversationalist and you can like tell because like you know when you like go on a date or meet a new friend Mm -hmm. and you have a conversation and then, like, there's a bunch of awkward pauses, and the only way you get through them is by asking the other person another question, and you realize that there's no give and take. You're just mm. taking or, like, giving everything. You're not doing that. This is Thank great. You. Thank um, you. Keep going. Yep. Yeah, so, okay, <laughs> back to the story. Um, yeah, so this is going to be, like, anticlimactic as, as hell, but... Um, Can't wait. It was, like, the first red carpet I ever did. It was, like, a little small thing, like, day premiere. And someone was like, Sarah, what's the, um, like, what's the... What was the funniest thing that ever happened to you? Like some big prank. Like Disney's like obsessed with the idea of pranks, so it's like that's one of their favorite questions. Like who's the biggest prankster on set and all that stuff. But then anyway, somebody asked me like about a prank, and I didn't have anything fun. I'm not like a zany person. Mm. I would say um, I am pretty mellow mm. at, nowadays, at least. Um, but I felt the pressure to like come up with something really funny. So I was like, one time in high school, I started a food fight. <laughs> They were like, what? <laughs> and I, I really had to go down that road because I couldn't I couldn't be like, never mind, it was a joke. Like I had I was like, yeah, um, it really happened at, um, at my school. And then they were like, well, how? Like, what was that about? And I like I, I honestly kind of want to find this interview nowadays to see how that went. 
Um, Can we find it? I uh, please don't. <laughs> It was like, I'm sure it was so bad. Cause I was like, yeah, I mean, it didn't, we didn't mean for it to happen, but like, we had like an outdoor cafeteria and there was a thing and I accidentally threw, it was like the worst story. Cause I'm sure it was really obvious. I was lying about the whole thing. Cause who, nobody actually has a food fights. So I was like, okay. And then like later on that same interview, like someone, or like, or carpet, someone was like, yeah. what are you wearing? And I was like, forever 21. Uh, which was true, but like they don't think they wanted to hear that. Oh, who gives? I don't care about that. Is it that was, not good? No, store? that was great. No, I I enjoyed it. I mean, fast fashion. So nowadays, I would tell you actually to steer clear and go for sustainable ethical options. But like oh, okay. back in the day, I was all about it. Um, um, but yeah, no, that was uh, that was like my first red carpet ever experience. That was my bad. Oh my gosh, that I love cringe moments. Yep, like I, I've got oh, a lot for you. Oh. <laughs> I adore real life moments like that. Mm -hmm. I live for that <laughs> because it's so real and everybody in the room feels it. And it's so like. What, the secondhand embarrassment? <laughs> low, everybody's like, oh, this is not normal <sighs> society rules. What's going on? Oh, I have a bunch. If you, you just give me a topic, I'm sure I can spit one out. Oh, if you think of anything off the top of your head, please let us know. Let me tell you about my first kiss. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> that sounded so creepy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, not like that. Okay. We'll cut yeah, that yeah. part out. No. Okay. No. Redo the reaction. Um, no, I mean, like, it, it, pretty much what happened is this. Like, it was my first date. I was, like, I was 20. I was 20 when I had my first date and my first kiss. Oh. And so, um, you know, it was, it was good. It was really nice. Uh, but I knew by the end of it that I just wasn't interested in the person. But we were walking back to his car and and then we stopped and I was like, this is it. Like he's gonna he's gonna leave. I can tell. Like you know, you can. It's an eye thing. It's an eyeball thing. You can tell by the eye contact. And I was like, it's gonna happen. I was like, I don't really like him, but I, I kind of think it maybe it'd be just a good idea to get my first kiss done and over with. So he kissed me, and I didn't know what to do. I mean, it was fine. Like the kiss was fine. But then afterwards, it was just like what I perceived to be awkward silence. So I just said, thank you. <laughs> oh my god. And then he was like, Did you just say thank you? <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, what did you want me to say? All Good right. job. And then we went home. And I went home. All right. <laughs> I won't let I won't let you Yeah, just give me some. I'll back, no, <laughs> I'll tell you about my one of my most awkward kissing moments. And it was something that I said. Let's go. Let's go right now. And I have no clue why I said this. Mom, please fast forward through this part. I don't want to deal with this conversation. <laughs> uh, I was making out with this girl, right? Good. And <laughs> the way you said good. <laughs> Dude, you were, you were so blank in your expression. You were just like, good. <laughs> As you should. What, else, you what should. else would you be doing with Sam? What the hell? Uh, yeah, that's all I do all day. <laughs> anyway, so I'm making out with her. I'm kissing her neck, and it's getting passionate, and... For some reason, I said, if I was a vampire, you'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my what? God. Can I use that? Oh, please. <laughs> Can I take that with me into my, uh, my real day life? Oh, my gosh. What did she do? That's she the important laughed. part of this. She laughed. Yeah, I laughed. Afterwards, I, I was... And then you kept going, or was it just like, oh, actually, uh, coming? Like, you know, that kind of... Like, not that way, but... Uh, uh, sips tea. Oh, my gosh. I just got... I didn't sad. mean it! I didn't mean it! <laughs> it's hard to do that bit, like, the coming bit when, like, you can't see that you're looking away to another room, and right. then it's just the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I going. stopped... Uh, no, for my mom's sake, I stopped kissing her and then opened up the, the Bible, the Quran, course. and every other religious book, and oh, started yes. repenting. Yeah. As you would. Yeah. Yeah. What else do people do in the middle yeah. of make-out sessions? Nothing escalates until you're married. Yes. That's that's me. My mom is going to give me so much shit for this. Oh, my gosh. It's Listen, my mom. I love her. I love you, Mom. Are um, you an only child? No, two younger brothers. Oh. Yeah. Was that, like, a lot of pressure? Are they still in Oklahoma? No. Uh, youngest uh, middle brother. Mm -hmm. He lives with... Uh, we live together. He does music production full time. He's oh, a musical fun. artist and produces music. And then the youngest brother is in dental school in Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. so he's the probably the the favorite child. What? Why? Uh, dentistry. Yeah, it's like ha prime time. <laughs> Sarah, well, I, 
Yeah, no, no, I'm saying, I'm like, from your parents' point of view, you're my favorite, obviously, but like, no, you know. No, I'm the favorite. Are you really? Yes. Is that true, or is that, are you, do you have a biased sense because you're in the middle of the situation? 100% true. Interesting. Yeah, and my brothers argue against it, but I'm the favorite, for okay. sure. Okay, I'll take it for you, I trust you. Yeah. Seem like a trustworthy guy. <laughs> Seem like you got a good head on your shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> I like that voice. I don't know what that was. But I, <laughs> I like don't it. either. Uh, I try to get my mom. Excuse me, I got the snivels. I try to get my mom to uh, admit sometimes, like I'm secretly recording her, who her favorite child is, and she'll never say. She says, "I love you all equally." I'm like, "All right." That's a power play on her move. Yeah, she I knows. used to convince my parents that I was kidnapped in the middle of uh, large department stores. Huh? So we're kind of the same in that way, aren't what? we? <laughs> I thought it'd be fun to like play that. Like I was like, oh, I'm a practical jokester when I was like seven or eight. Oh my gosh! So I used to like when we were shopping, I'd like hide in the middle of you know like the clothing racks yes. or like you know go into like really obscure aisles and hide there. And like she never fell for it. She was like, Sarah, I always know. And I always kind of wondered if like she actually knew or she just said that so I'd be like, oh, she knows, and I'd come out. But one time she actually got scared. And uh, and then I witnessed her like freak out, thinking her child had been kidnapped from like around the corner, and um, and never did it again, for obvious reasons. Once I realized I was a monster. <laughs> this is the prank story you should have told. I know, but instead <laughs> I came up with a food fight. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Don't you hate it when you start a lie like that, and you're like, oh, it's too far. I'm too far in. I have to kind of pull back. And you just keep going. I, I feel like I should say yes, but no. No, you just go with it. No, brave. Yeah, brave person. I mean, what was the most recent lie you told? Most recent lie. I'm actually kind of curious. I I need to think about this. I like I don't know when I last lied. I don't. Li- I try not to do it. Yeah, I, I can't it, even think about. It. Yeah, I have even no like filter. small lie. Oh, I know which one. Whenever yeah. I said you were you were nice on set. Dead air. Okay. <laughs> Gosh. Mm, well, uh, it's about time I be going. <laughs> um, uh, no, uh, let's see. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Most recent lie. I I don't lie. I don't have a filter anymore. If somebody's talking really loud on their phone next to me, I even go like, "Huh? Oh, sorry. I thought you were talking to me." <laughs> Maybe that's. I guess that's a lie. I know. I'm just kind of provoking. Taking up space, 2020. That's my motto. Oh. Take up space. That's what you say to them. No. Oh. Huh? That's my motto for me. I mean, it's a little bit different. Maybe you could argue uh, with like um, uh, male versus, versus female. You know, not to put everybody in a gender binary. It, okay. No, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm curious. <laughs> I'm curious to know what you mean. What do you mean taking up space? So, um, so it's I joined. I recently joined an organization called the Wing. Um, I don't know if you've heard of them, but it's like a, it's like it's like women and marginalized genders. It's have you heard oh. of the Soho House? No. Okay. Okay. Never mind. So it's like membership based organization. Okay. Um, and the wing is one that's ad- like uh, for the advancement of women and marginalized genders. That's great. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like to try and help and create a community where like you don't feel like um, restricted in any way. I mean, not this isn't like this sounds like a commune, but I mean like they have like clubhouses in different cities. So they have one in like L. A. Yeah. And you go in and it's just like there's a work environment. They have a cafe, like coffee. Um, you can go there and do work if you don't have an office, like conference rooms, all that stuff. They have them in different parts of the country and now world. But um, it's just so that like, but it's like the temperature, like, okay, so most offices are set for men's uh, metabolic rates. So it tends to be a bit colder because men have more active metabolic rates. So men it, so men get, um, are usually um, have a little bit of a higher temperature. So most offices are cold for women because they're set to be the comfortable temperature for men. I had no idea. This is like a lot of new research I've done. And so like the wing is like set for women's metabolic rates. So you, it's, it's, it's like small stuff like that, but, um, so I'm not, I'm, I know the face I'm making and I apologize. No, no, I've I don't just, take it as like, I don't I've take heard, I've, <laughs> no, it's a fine, fine. I don't, I like you, you know what I mean? And like uh, from this moment and you're really, you're really uh-huh. nice. And I, I'm trying, it sounds a, so crazy to me like like mm-hmm. that that kind of discrepancy like people are doing that on purpose is that is that is that what's happening with the I mean I don't I wouldn't say I don't I mean I I haven't thought about the motives behind that I don't think it's like a 
like screw women type of like right. mindset that causes that. But I think probably historically men set the thermostats to what was comfortable for them because they, mm. you know, have been off also like if you're looking even like, I don't know when air conditioning was invented. It's curious to me now. Yeah, yeah. it's like, it's, it's just interesting stuff. I mean, that's like a small example, but anyway, so they, one of their mottos that they give out, like they give out bags at the beginning and yeah. one of them's like, just take up space. It's the whole thing of like make room at the table. You know what I mean? Oh. Have like women at the table. Like, so okay. taking up space. I like that. Yeah. I like that part. Yeah. Um, but not the thermostat part. Screw that. <laughs> I have reservations about that, to be honest with you. I'd like to know where they got no, no, their, no. Fact, their, their fact stats. Check. Fact check. Honestly, uh, everybody fair, should right? be fact checking. Don't yeah. take anything I say to be real. I can yeah. be a pathological liar. No, this is um, this is really interesting to me. Um, but, you know, I was so lucky. Even though my parents were conservative, they were very liberal. I, I don't even liberal is the right word. I think it's just like being a decent human being, you know, like equality and like don't judge someone based on their their gender, their, their, their sexual orientation, their race, you know, d- you know, you should decide whether you like them or want to spend time around them, whether based on their actions, based on how they treat other people, how they treat themselves, that mm-hmm. sort of thing. So growing up, it was just like common sense. So that's why when I hear like certain people are marginalized or something, I'm like, wait, what, why? That's, I, yeah. that's so ridiculous. But then I don't know how you feel about this. Sometimes I feel like the pendulum swinging the other way too far in certain se- in certain ways. For instance, I think an example would be, and now we're getting into like tricky territory because oh, now no, that says everybody's going to be like, "Oh, we Sam doesn't like women," or "We Sam's yeah. like you know," uh, the idea with uh, um, uh, the Oscars uh, n- or the Glo- Golden Globes, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there were no women directors, mm-hmm. correct? Oh, I don't know. I don't watch award shows. Okay. I think the main problem, instead of, it feels like they're saying, and I don't think this is their thing, like, we have to nominate a certain percentage of women directors. And then I, I start going, well, then what about a certain percentage of, like, uh, like uh, black women directors or Asian women directors and then Asian men director, you know, like, and then what about, all the other genders that they're that that people relate to, like what what about them then? Does that make sense? It no, starts no, like it does. So and I, it's just like it's it's. Oh, sorry. I, I no, no, no. I just wanted to get to the, before somebody mm-hmm. crucifies me on no, on no, the no. internet. I just wanted to say that I think the main problem is making more opportunities and opening the door for any good directors to come through, despite their 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 race, despite uh, their their gender choice, despite their. Uh, sexual orientation, whatever. Does that make sense? I think that's the main problem. That's what should be fixed. No, it it totally makes sense. And like, I don't know, to me at least you're not coming off in a way. I think think that this is such a tricky time because all of this stuff is coming to light. Um, We are in tricky territory. (laughs) Yeah, right? This is uncomfortable Um, because we both don't want people like just to jump on... Jump yeah, on I'm us. just gonna caveat it. I'm gonna Please. asterisk the beginning of this conversation, yeah, um, so that we can actually have it. But like, given that I don't find myself, I, I hope I'm not a, I don't think I am racist, sexist, um, ageist, uh, religiousist. I mean, all that. Yeah. But like, I, I would say that like there is some truth to like PC culture is getting a little bit intense. And I know people are going to jump on that, but what I mean is I don't think it's useful for the movement. The, in the, the forwarding of all these like minorities and marginalized people, because at this point it's like people are afraid to have the discussion period because they don't want to say the wrong thing because they don't want to get yelled at and like cursed out over Twitter and, um, you Mm. know, um, just ostracized because of, of, like a misspoken word or like not knowing how to use um, a certain uh, identifier, you know, like a, pe- a lot of people don't understand like what, what is queer, what is trans, like so they don't want to say it at all, they don't want to talk about it at all um, because they don't want to misuse it and get and get attacked. And I think that that's just counterintuitive to the idea of like forwarding these causes, which I believe in, because if we're not going to have a conversation and if people don't feel like they can talk and mess up, how are they supposed to learn? How are you supposed to be able to say, like, oh, actually, like, that's not what we mean when you say blank, 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 instead of just like, shut up, go back home, you're a bigot. Like, yeah, I think there's it's now it's a little bit too black and white. And 
I found that like most of the problems in my life have come when I see things too black and white. Um, it, there's so much grayscale, and this is like a new time, and there's so much to learn. And if we can't have a conversation, then it, I don't. I think it's gonna honestly just. It, slow down the movements that are happening. I mean, there's yeah. so much more to be said on this. I don't know. In terms of um in terms of, you know, the award shows, I get it because it, the, it's like we shouldn't it shouldn't just be about like awarding uh, minority directors or, you know, female directors. It should be giving them more opportunities to make work in the first place, not just slapping yeah. a trophy on it at the end. So it's uh, like I I really appreciate Disney. Like Disney Channel getting, you know, gave me my first like really big steady job. Like I owe them a lot. I'm not trying to bite the hand that fed. But, you know, they, at least when I was there, had their policy on directors for the season. And we had like, I don't know, 20, 21 episodes a season was you had to have one director, um, like a minority, like not white. And you had to have one female director. And anybody else could be whatever else you wanted. But you had to have one have one episode done by a female, and one episode done by a not white. And if you look at our season, we had one female direct female director, one African American director, and the rest were white males. And so the the pro that's like that's the problem to me. It's not about well did that did the African American director get an award for his episode like that's not the problem the problem is that like we're not opening the door in the first place but see then then it becomes uh, you, listen i agree with no this, everything yeah, you said no, but back. yeah th this is and it's not what you said it's like okay we need one. Oh, well well then what's the right number because then you have people who go oh well that's too little okay what's enough yeah and it's, then it's like tricky. you got like people because we're such a connected throughout the world it's like, okay, like, do we have to have every, like, why can't we judge people based on merits? And that's because there's a few select people who are in charge of things who do have certain uh, racial tendencies or, or, or racist well, tendencies. Yeah. Prejudice, you're, you're absolutely right. That's a much better word. That cause this imbalance. And so that's why I'm always like, first of all, judging a film, like best film or best screenplay, how the hell are you going to, judge art like that you judge like a painting by van gogh painting by leonardo da vinci a painting by uh monet like all three are different styles and different techniques it's it's like okay which one is the best at that point yeah i mean it's uh, already difficult enough now we're making it even more difficult so it's frustrating and i hate i hate when people like you said they're 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 like they argue online and they don't have these discussions in person mm -hmm. because I could tell, I promise you, 90% of people, 95% of people, I bet, would not be saying the stuff they say online. 100%. 100%. And uh, it's it's so much easier to troll than to be like, I agree, that's a really good opinion, you know, online. Yeah. Or I don't know, maybe it isn't. Maybe just people like to do that. But, but I think, like, the problem with, like, award shows is that, like, what people want at the award show is representation. Do you know what I mean? Like, they want a representation of different types of people as directors. Do you, do you know what I mean? Not just all white male directors. But the problem is, if when you're greenlighting projects, the only projects you greenlight are, like, all by, like, white men and then, like, a handful of that, then it's, like, if you're talking about an award show, then, like, statistically that doesn't make sense that you'd have more representation of minorities or females if, like, in the whole sample... And every day there is such a few. Do you know what I mean? Hundred percent. And so it's like yeah. you can't you can't take that into consideration. I think in an ideal world, when you're judging art, and uh, that's why it's. But it's like it's tricky because then how do you create those numbers? Like it's like the in California, you have to now have like a female on the board I of saw every that. of any company that's based out of California, and that's great because. There are so many companies that have no females on the board. And like that, if you look at how women perform in jobs, stati st wow, statistically, statistically that doesn't match up. So the problem is, it's like, but how do you put the number? How do you put the cap? And it's like for anything, it's like, how, it's so arbitrary. Like, should what? it be 50% should be female? Should it be the same percentage? But the problem is like the system in which like we're trying to get these numbers out is like obviously not working, which is the why we are trying to make these numbers in the first place. And, like, in an ideal world, it would just be, like, oh, reflective of society as a whole because society is diverse and amazing. But obviously that's not happening. No. And so it's, like, how so how do you create, like, 
the numbers. And, like, right. that's the problem. And, like, uh, it's, it's frustrating because it seems so simple. Judge someone based on their merits. What, what's, like, I, I mean, yeah. and, and if it happens to be all women, awesome. If it happens to be all men, cool. Are those the best people for the job? You know, like, figuring out, is it all Asian dudes? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, what yeah. if that happened for a whole season of a television show? It was all, like, Indonesian women. Like, oh, that's cool. Were they the best people qualified? Great. Then that's what it is. Yeah. And it just it just bothers me that we get so hung up. It feels like somebody's trying to distract us. Hmm? That's where my conspiracy side comes <laughs> up. Um, this has been awesome talking with you. We're still going to go. I got to take a break because I'm about to pee my pants. <laughs> Sounds um, good. Relatable. But this has been, we're going to continue this. This is awesome. Okay. Uh, if you're listening still. Which it should be. Yeah, uh, we'll be what right the back. hell? <laughs> and what the hell, guys? Get back on here. <laughs> we'll be back. Okay. What's Karin's problem? Oh, my God. Nothing. That boy is perfect. You think so? I think so. No. He's my boy. He's your boy. Yes. We, he we, um... I can't tell how we met because it's actually like very unflattering on my end. But like okay. we met um, when we were on Disney Channel and they were they were filming Jesse on the soundstage next to I Didn't Do It. I don't know if you remember that over in Hollywood. Yeah. And um, I used to see them like running by all the time because they would all run past our stage to go to the basketball hoop. And I don't I honestly he could tell you he probably remembers, but I have no idea. Like the first time we really hung out. Yeah. But then we figured out we have the same birthday. Oh, wow. And then it was one of those things that was like, we're best friends. Yeah. That's it. And now it's been wow. like seven years. The way we met was uh, we share the same publicist. Ooh. And my publicist came up to me and was like, listen, Caron keeps annoying me. He's like, oh, I'm a big fan of Wee Sam Keish. Uh, oh, my gosh. He's like a mentor Sounds to me. Sounds like Karin. I want to be like him when mm -hmm. I grow up. I, I have so much to learn from him. He's, he's so good. Look I want to be that good looking. I know I can't, but I'm going to He be, still I, says that stuff when I talk to him. All the time. Yeah. All the time. And that's how we met. Finally, like, we, we set up something. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And he read me like this letter he wrote for me, like saying, "Like I'm so, I look up to you so much." Sounds you know? like Karn. It sounds like Karn. Yeah. So that's how we met. And that's he the keeps a photocopy of it in his wallet. The the letter for you. Yeah, yeah. Every I know. now and then, with me, you know, if he gets emotional, he'll pull it out and be like, "Did you see my letter? Do we, Sam?" I'm like, "Yeah." That's a great Karn crying. Sorry, Karn. I didn't mean it. No, no, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> He's too pure. I can't. He's just like the sweetest person in the world. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. No, he is. He's actually a really cool guy. Really good friend too. Yep. Do you have any other good friends or just him? Nah. Yeah. Yeah. I keep a keep a small little entourage. I do. My circle's small. Actually. Oh yeah. Yeah. Is that what it's like for you? Um, kind of. I mean, because I've. <laughs> I was about to say something so douchey. I was about to say, because I've lived so many lives. <laughs> Which sounds so bad. But what I mean is that um, like I have I have best friends from high school. I have, like, two best friends from high school. Um, so that's that. And then I have, um, like, one or two really close people from USC. Mm. And then one or two clo really close people um, from more intellectual, like, interna international policy spheres. Um, and then I have, like, my acting friends. So, okay. I, I, so I don't know. It's, like, I feel like in comparison, it's a pretty big circle. But right. for me, it's, like, I have my little group. Well, it, 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 for me, it feels like you've lived so many lives. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, dear. Uh, Mom, can you pick me up? There's alcohol here. <laughs> I, I kid, I kid. I like that. Mm -hmm. Like a grown-ass adult. Just yeah, want to be so, mom, can you pick me up? There's alcohol <laughs> in front of everybody. Like, what? Oh, My I gotta Uber go. is here. Uh, yeah. um, gentlemen, uh, would you like to do, or, not, you're not the gentleman. Uh, uh, current events? Sound good? We're going to do current events here. We'd like to talk yeah. about them. Oh, you sure. You down for some current events? I love that. That was the weirdest transition. I almost choked on my spit. Uh, gentlemen, what do we got for current events? Uh, let's start with something. Is this like a quiz, or right. like are we just discussing them? Yeah, just uh, they pull up some current events that's going on. All right, let's freaking go. go. Oh. If you want, I'd like to. Well, he's a little late on that. I know. 
That, oh, am I doing this one? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Jordan Belfort, as you know, who is portrayed in the movie The Wolf of Wall Street, is now suing producers for $300 million for fraud. What? Yeah. And, like, this movie, what was this, a 2015 movie? 2013. What? what? Wow. Are you serious? Yeah. This was seven but, years ago? Wait, what? Oh, yeah, happened? there it is, 2013. What fraud? What is what? What? What's the kind of fraud? Just the depiction oh, of is things like, that is it, happened. Is it like a defamation case? I really don't know. This is brand new. It's like coming up. Uh, but <laughs> listen, here's what the lawyer should say. Um, excuse me, sir. We portrayed you like you got played by Leonardo DiCaprio. Go home. There. Yeah. Do you know how many people want he that was to happen to them? In the movie, he was. Who was he? He was the guy at the end uh, giving like a speech, I think. Okay, that's so right. so what the hell? What the, that's like that's like that's like going to like yeah. Chipotle and like will like ordering like hey, um I'd like to, you know, get a burrito. And they're like, "Oh, just so you know, these burritos um have um, you know, flour in it." And you're like, "Oh, I'm totally fine with that. I'd like to still have one." Oh. And then you eat the burrito and then 5 years later you're like, I was allergic. You tried to kill me. I'm suing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. he was in the movie. I see what it is now. Um, the apparently the part of the funding of the film came from embezzling two hundred and forty eight million dollars, and uh, Belfort had no idea that that was the case. Uh, that stolen money was used to fund the film. Wait, I'm sorry. Well, the Wolf <laughs> of Wall Street. The story about a fraud. Wall Street financier or whatever he was, investment banker, was funded by stolen money. <laughs> you know, it's that's, really that's poetry. Real, that's the real story. Here. That, it, it, all, it comes full circle. It all makes sense now. Life is a circle. Wow. Okay. That was all right. weird. All right. That was weird. What, we, what else we got? <laughs> I have no comment on that. <laughs> Literally no, nothing to say, but Okay. It's such a rich people suck. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna things. say. So a dollar. Well, I can't open secret. the full story because we're not subscribed to the Wall Street Journal. But the oh. U.S. is working to evacuate American mm. citizens from Wuhan, which is the location of the co- oh. out coronavirus outbreak. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, so China just uh, shut down all tourism or like tourists uh, going in and uh, going out. Uh, mm-hmm. The. Um, yeah, and uh, they shut down all buses going into Beijing or like outside of Wuhan. Wuhan, sorry, it's I'm like a city of like eleven million people. Yeah, and so they don't want people to get into the the capital. And um, President Jinping, I can't say I'm so sorry. I'm so white, but like <laughs> Xi, she. Xi Jinping, I can't. I feel so bad every time. I feel like it just sounds racist, and I know how to Winnie spell the it. Poo. Yeah, the, the president. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, was uh, said like we will get through this with uh, with uh, control and prevention. So um, that's good. But yeah, now it's in three places in the in the U.S. It's in Colorado, Chicago, and Washington. Yeah, we're definitely not ready for kind of any pandemic. I don't know if anyone's ever ready for a <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think a Texas student uh, possibly has it too. Like a Texas college student. Of course I know they there would. are cases in the U.S. already of it. Yeah, in someone's Oregon, arrived Washington. in France. That's cute. Yeah. Yeah, Australia has it now. It's a, I don't know. I feel like the the word pandemic is so scary, and um, I also believe that most of these things tend to target you know older um, folks or like infants yeah. and small children. So I feel like, knock on wood, but like our age range is pretty safer. Maybe. Maybe I would hope if you get the right treatment. I yeah. feel like, but well, that's uh, what they were saying. Is like there's they they have to build a hospital in Wuhan because mm-hmm. they need like respirators and all these different medical equipment to be able to uh, treat those with the virus. Shit. They but, said it might come from fi- the fish market there. It, yeah, like it came most, from an animal market. Someone bit the head off a bat. Good. Good. We love it when we have a fun story, a fun origin story. Ooh, <laughs> have fun. <laughs> I don't know. Who's going to buy the rights for this? <laughs> they already did it. It's called Contagion. That's true. Oh, my God. I think that literally came from a bat in the movie. It's been a while since I watched it. Is that with um, Matt Damon? Well, that's how, like, SARS Matt started. Matt Damon. Yeah. Gwen, like, I think it was Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. With the fake Gwyneth Paltrow head. I, I don't watch movies. 
Crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm super. Viruses crazy. are crazy. To yeah, think about they what are. they are and what damage they could do to a human body. Insane. What else we got? Time for my weird shit that I like to find. Okay. Uh, Sasquatch, we found him in Washington. I want to see this. There it is. A snowplow uh, camera picked this up, and there he is. Sasquatch. But I don't see him. Where? Do you see him in front of the tree? That's just right. the tree. No, there it is. Oh. What's, what, it Sasquatch. Just, it's just the it's a oh, video I thought, camera. I thought or that is was it a, a trunk. It's a still photo. Sasquatch. So it could be a person right for sure. Mm-hmm. Right here. But it's not. It's Sasquatch. And then here. <laughs> Do you I believe watch, in like the Yeti or Sasquatch or? I watch Finding Bigfoot a lot on television. I want to <laughs> believe it's real, but the okay. thing, the biggest proof that it doesn't exist, and it's so damning, we haven't found any bones, any carcasses, any scat. Well, what if he's immortal? And doesn't defecate. That's, That's my other theory. The only way Bigfoot is real is if he's like some supernatural being of some sort. It's like a monster of like like a unicorn almost, you know? Yeah. And and what similar. if like his poop, his feces, like replicates that of like a winter moose? You know, so like mm-hmm. you wouldn't see it and be like, oh, that's that's Sasquatch um, uh, feces. It's it would be like, oh, there a moose pooped over here, but let's keep looking for Sasquatch. Yep. Yeah. This is science. <laughs> I'm a scientist and a I just want to be clear here, Sarah. Yep. You're saying what if Bigfoot poops the poop that's exactly the same as moose poop? Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's why we haven't found it because we haven't been looking for the right shaped feces. That's the quote for the show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> get it on your shirts. Get it on your beanies. What was it? I missed I'll it. watch your face and be like. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that. I'm Think smart. about that. <laughs> USC graduate. Yeah. Woo-hoo. I have a USC uh, funny audition story. Oh, hit me with it. So I was so naive and, again, stupid when applying for colleges. I feel you. Uh... I was like, oh, yeah, I'll get into USC. It's fine. And my mom was like, you should apply to other colleges. I'm like, no, 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 it's fine. I want to go to USC, so I'll probably get in. She's like, no, (laughs) you should apply to other colleges. I'm like, all right, fine. So I applied to another college, like two other ones. Mm -hmm. My USC audition went horribly wrong because it was – I don't know how you auditioned for it, but it was broken up into three sections, Mm -hmm. whereas like an interview – you did then an audition, like monologue for one person, and then something else. There was like another interview, like so it was like set, split up into three, and I had to fly to Chicago to do it. Oh, yeah, for okay. the theater program. Okay, and they split us up into three groups, mm-hmm. and they would go through the names of the people, and I was just waiting there for my name to be called, and then I realized, oh shoot, they're on the next group. I was like, I'm sorry, I think you skipped my name. And they're like, oh no, uh, we're so sorry. Uh, here, just do your, uh, we'll do your interview real quick or whatever. And they like rushed me through it. And then they like squeezed me into the next room. And I was like, not, I didn't get time to prepare. And yeah. I messed up. And they were just like, ah, okay, thank you. And I'm like, oh no. Yeah, it was it was a train wreck. But worked out for the best. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's my USC audition story. Mine went super well because I got in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I went in for a theater. Yeah. Uh, but different, different situation. Did they like you in the program? You know, I don't know because I left after a year. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I was trying to make a joke, but that's... Oh, oh sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you left after a year. Yeah, well, I, I graduated from USC, but um, after a year in the theater program, I kind of... To each their own. Uh, but I kind of decided that, like, financially, it wasn't worth doing acting courses inside USC when I could take them for thousands of dollars less in Hollywood. Yeah. A couple miles away. So um, so I I transferred internally into film school, to, into the film school. Sweet. Yeah. Great. So. That's awesome. But it was, yeah, it was good. It's great. Where, yeah, where did you end up going to school? University of Tulsa. I had a great acting program at the time I went there. Nice. Uh, great teacher, Lisa Wilson. Nice. Kick ass. Like, the best acting teacher. Honestly, like, the acting programs, I know that some are, like, more, like, you know, famous than others, but it really comes down to the teachers. And if yeah. you, like, vibe with them and also you, people, your class. Mm. Like, so. Yeah. I agree with you. Uh, what else we got on uh, current events? Was that it? That was it. That was it? All right. Well, Sarah. I- <laughs> You're like, oh, God, get her out of here. Oh, God, God, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say, um, I've had such a blast talking with you, and I'm Me so too. glad you got to come on and... 
Um, we'll talk um, after this about the accountability thing, if you're still down. I am still down. Yeah. And books. And books. Oh, yeah. I just finished two or three books this month, so I'll have to send them over your way. I love that. Um, now is time to good time to plug words. My <laughs> now is a good time I'm to plug struck. my new. I made a new reading list. If you want to uh, keep up with it on Instagram. Okay, oh yeah, I'll tell you about it. It's called Goodreads underscore and underscore chill. Okay, that's all. Goodreads and chill. Goodreads and chill. Okay, I like it. And yeah. any, I just love books. I, yeah. We should if we're gonna shut it down. Don't get me started on this. Okay. We'll save it for the next time you come on. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. If you'd like to come back on. I would love this. This was so great. Maybe we'll bring in a friend. Maybe we'll do a car on. Oh, my gosh. I can't. I can't. Um, we I, have them sit outside. Oh. And then do like a little zoom in. Yeah. Yeah. We make I'm them excited. Bright. I'm kidding. I just love giving him a hard time. Or we could just do that next time. Just give him a mic on the couch outside and just like watch him while we talk. Mm-hmm. He thinks it's on. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, oh, my God. You literally cracked yourself up. <laughs> it's funny because no one else in the room is laughing. I don't care. It's funny shit. He, oh can you God. imagine, like, the, what, the processes of him like, hello? Hello? I th- I've been talking for 10 minutes. It hasn't been on. <laughs> Play us out, Michael. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening. Oh, had a good time. Sarah, thanks again. Thank you. This was great. That's Sarah Gilman. That's me. And uh, good reads and chill. Good reads and chill. Yeah. Thank you, Adobe Radio. Nice guy digital. Thank you to all of our new listeners and subscribers. We appreciate you guys. Oh, boy. Always remember to listen, think, and then talk. Bye.